Today we are doing section 1.5 in your geometry book. We're going to talk about how to define terms in geometry. We're going to start with defining adjacent angles. These are examples of adjacent angles. Angle A, B, C, angle C, B, D are a pair of adjacent angles. The same in this picture. Angle A, B, D, angle C, B, D are a pair of adjacent angles. These are all non-examples. Examples where there's something in the picture, or more than one something, that makes them not adjacent angles. Read carefully here. Angle A, B, C, and angle A, B, D are not a pair of adjacent angles. In this picture, angle A, B, C, and angle B, C, D are not a pair of adjacent angles. And finally, in this picture, angle A, B, C, and angle D, B, E are not a pair of adjacent angles. Now I want you to pause this video and write down some of the things that these pairs of angles have in the examples of adjacent angles that these non-examples do not. By doing this, you'll be listing the characteristics that adjacent angles have that other pairs of angles do not. Start writing those down now. Okay, let's look at the definition for adjacent angles and see how you did. The definition in your book says adjacent angles are two angles that lie in the same plane, have a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. Let's see how the picture shows us that definition. These are not adjacent angles because they have interior points in common. These are the interior points for angle ABC. These are the angle are interior points for angle ABD. Notice that these points are shared. Angle ABC and BCD are not adjacent angles because they do not share a common vertex. Angles ABC and DBE are not a pair of adjacent angles because they do not share a common side. So the characteristics needed to be adjacent angles is that you must have two or a pair of angles they must be in the same plane together. They must have a common vertex, a common side, but no common interior points. Another definition we're going to go over is our vertical angles. Again, vertical angles are a pair, but they are the non-adjacent angles formed when two lines intersect. In this picture here, we can see two lines intersecting. When that happens, we get four pairs of four angles. The angles right next to each other are, ver are not vertical angles. They are adjacent angles, like what we just learned about. The angles across from each other, AEB and DEC, or BEC and AED, are vertical angles. These are not vertical angles because they are not formed by two lines intersecting, since D, E, and C are non-collinear. A linear pair are another pair of angles. These are a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays, meaning that they share this vertex E but go in opposite directions and together form a straight line. Angle BED and BEC 
are a linear pair. In this picture, the pairs of angles that are formed are either vertical angles, the non-adjacent angles, or linear pairs, the adjacent angles. In this picture, AEB and BEC are a linear pair. These angles are not a linear pair because D, E, and C, again, are non-collinear. So the non-common sides do not form a straight line. Complementary angles are a pair of angles whose measures have a sum of 90. When complementary angles are adjacent, you don't need to know the measures of each individual angle, but you know together they make a right angle. We can tell this is a right angle by the square symbol in here. Complementary angles do not have to be adjacent. When they're not adjacent, we need to know their measures to be able to know that they add up to 90 before we can say that they are complementary. Supplementary angles are very similar to complementary angles. They are two angles whose measures have a sum of 180. When supplementary angles are adjacent, they form a linear pair. When they are not adjacent, we need to know their measures to show that they add up to 180. When we say that two lines are perpendicular, we say that they intersect at a right angle. Again, we can see in this picture, there's a right angle here by the square symbol. Not only do they intersect at one right angle, but all the right angles, all the angles in the intersection are right angles. Lines can intersect to form right angles, so can segments and rays. This symbol that looks like an upside down T means perpendicular to. This sentence here says segment X or line XZ is perpendicular to line WY. In geometry, there are things that can be assumed and cannot be assumed. Most of the things that cannot be assumed have to do with measurement. Most of the things that can be assumed have to do with position. You may assume in this picture that L, P, and Q are collinear and that L, Q is a line. You may assume that all of these rays intersect at point P because it looks like they intersect at point P. You may assume that point P is between L and Q because that is its position in the picture. You may assume that point N is in the interior of angle MPO because that is its position in the picture. Also, because we know what adjacent angles look like and what a linear pair looks like, we may assume that angles LPM and MPN are adjacent angles. And we may assume that angles LPN and NPQ are a linear pair because we may assume that this is a straight line. We don't want to assume that these are supplementary. We know that they're supplementary because we know angles in a linear pair are supplementary. Things that cannot be assumed are that these rays are perpendicular that these angles are congruent or that these segments are congruent. Because we cannot assume sizes from a picture and cannot assume that a picture is to scale, none of these measurements can be assumed.